I need to make some changes around here. Yesterday, my friend David came around with his Porsche Boxster 981 GTS. Would you like a cup of tea? And we thought it might be fun to do an owner's review. And thi this is what happened. Alright guys, so this is David everybody. Thanks for bringing your Boxster GDS uh, into the garage today. It's a beautiful looking car. Absolutely love the contrast. What colour is this David? It's uh, Agate Grey. Agate Grey yeah. and the contrast with the colour of the car against the roof, I think it, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, really sets it off really nicely. How long have you owned the car, David? So I've had this for three and a half years now. Is it your, is it your first Porsche? It is. It's I've looked at Porsches uh, historically, but this is my first. When you were sort of going through the whole process of buying this car, did you maybe consider any other Porsches? Because obviously for the money you probably paid for this car, there, were, there was probably quite a plethora of other cars like yeah. the 911s, the Caymans, yeah. the Cayman GDS that you could have had over this car. So what was your sort of thought process behind buying this car? I've always loved the brand since I was seven. I've yeah. wanted a Porsche, um, but actually, as I've got close to it, I definitely wanted a Boxster. Yeah. Um, so for me, I ruled pretty much all of the models in the in the uh, range out. I wanted a Boxster. You wanted the Boxster. It just yeah. had to be a Boxster. Yeah. Didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how much did you pay for the car? This was fifty four thousand. Fifty four thousand yeah. pounds, and that was three and a half years yeah. ago. So that was yeah. was it back in the twenty sixteen or uh, February twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean. Looking at the prices of these cars now, we've done a quick check this morning. They're probably going for between sort of 40 and 45,000 yeah. pounds. So yeah. you accept that you will lose a little bit of money on these cars, but the amount you gain in fun, enjoyment and memories. Priceless. It's absolutely yeah. priceless, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And if you were to buy any other Mark, three and a half years ago for 54,000 pounds, you would have lost a lot more money I'd on probably... those cars. Yeah, yeah, probably got bored and sold it by now as well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. For me, the beauty of these cars is looking at them with the roof down. So the one key trick, that to me is what the Boxster GDS should look like. And you're good to go. Beautiful. Yeah. Should we take it for a drive? Absolutely. Let's go. Yeah. I don't know why I was walking over there. <laughs> I wasn't even in the shot there, I don't think. <laughs> this car now for around about 10-15 minutes it has such a nice feel to it the seats are so comfortable but one thing I love is this Alcantara steering wheel it just has such a sporty feel when you're when you're turning it through the twisty roads and what I want to know from you David is how does the car make you feel when you're driving the car when you're out on your spirited runs and your long drives that you take it on it's just such a sense of occasion every time you, you sit into it and you start the engine yeah it just feels like such a special place to be yeah um i'm lucky it's obviously a weekend car so it's not a daily uh -huh. but it's just getting into it every single time it yeah it's it, it's it's interesting you mentioned the fact that it's not a daily because i don't know if you've ever driven a car like this as a daily driver but my old 996 for about a year i used that as a daily driver and it's exactly what you're saying there, it kind of lost its sense of occasion to the point where I had to relegate it back to a weekend car to feel that enjoyment out of it yeah. again. Yeah. And I, I mean, think if you don't overuse it, it feels that bit more special when you are driving it. Yeah, I mean, as you know, these cars can be used as dailies and yeah. frequently are. Absolutely. Um, I'm in the fortunate position that I don't need to, but I think you're right, it just helps keep it more special when it is that non-daily. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I'm interested to know about is any modifications you've done on the car? Just a few. Um, I've had cruise control retrofitted because that was one of the, the things that I would have been looking for. Right. Did you get Porsche to do that? Porsche fitted yeah. that. I got a deal. It's a standard mod that they do, but um, got a bit of deal on the labour. Right. Um, 
it's a nice touch to have, particularly with average speed camera areas, etc. Yeah, sure. Or on some of the big long uh, road trips we've yeah. done. Um, I've fitted the glass rear wind deflector. The standard is a mesh one. Okay. Uh, I just think the, the glass one's a little bit m m classier. I've had, uh, a, as you've mentioned before, the car's got quite a lot of Alcantara yeah. as standard, but the A-pillar trims, um, the A-pillar trims I had recovered in Alcantara and I just think it just adds a little bit of something to the it interior. It does, it does. It, it's, very, it's very different having this here and I absolutely love the look of it. I fitted the new later style 991 LED front side repeaters. Yes. Um, again, a really, really subtle mod, yeah. but it's, uh, it, it's got to be done. Yeah. Um, my sun visors are away at the moment. Because yes, I'm I did notice there was no sun visors. Yeah. They're away to be retrimmed in Alcantara as well. Oh, of course. Mr. Alcantara, eat your heart out, yeah. And uh, one thing I noticed when I undid the fuel cap is that you've got a special fuel cap on there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, just went for the optional aluminium look uh, fuel cap. It's it's not real aluminium, so it's a, an expensive lump of plastic. But yeah. with this being such a dark body color, I think it just, uh, again, it's a nice bright touch to that. It does look really good, it does look really good. I'm a little bit disappointed, David, to, to, to have learned that you've had this car for three and a half years and you've never once launch controlled it. Not this vehicle. Very no. disappointed. <laughs> well, I'm going to change that. So you put it into Sport Plus. Yep. You go foot on the brake, foot on the accelerator. Lock it down. Launch control activated. That was awesome. That's incredible, yeah. isn't it? That's <laughs> awesome. Let's do that again. to know about how you drive the car have you ever taken it on any track days or anything like that so I've not done any track days in this vehicle I've done a couple at our local circuit down in Croft yeah different cars uh, not my own cars just cars but on not the this day. not this particular car, uh, but yeah. I've not yeah. done a track day in this do you think you ever would take it on a track day or are yeah you um, worried about putting it into a wall not so much because I think if I was going to do a track day I'd go with some tuition as well yeah uh, and obviously you're in a much safer environment than just the public roads as well of course yeah I think uh, I think it's very wise to go down the tuition route if you've never if you've never done it before you've, or you don't actually know that track because that is you know probably 60 70 percent of getting the best out of the car on the track is knowing how to drive it on the yeah. track yeah so what about any other notable, I don't know, road trip experiences or any driving experiences that you've done in this car? Any, any memories made in this car? Yeah, so, I mean, as you know, we there's, there was a bunch of us did the road trip to Germany last year. Um, oh, yeah, I was there, well, I was there, wasn't and, I? Yeah. And that was just incredible. We went to the Porsche factory in the museum, yeah. uh, which was just epic. So there's a repeat of that plan for next year. Uh -huh. um, hopefully, visit to the Nürburgring as well yeah, of course. Uh, at that point I've also done the same road trip uh, a few years earlier with my son yeah. and again we did the Frankfurt Motor Show we did the Porsche Museum and the factory tour yeah it's a really practical car for yeah. road trips yeah. you know it's got two boots front and rear and it's quite surprising at the amount of kind of luggage you can get in for a long weekend yeah, yeah, away definitely, or definitely. five or six days away how, uh, how many miles did he cover on that trip it was just 2,000, I think it was 2, about right, 1,985, yeah. I think, yeah. from memory. Well, you didn't get the, uh, well, we didn't get the Nürburgring done last time, but hopefully next time, and you will get the chance to take this on the track. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and is it a car that you plan to keep for a long time, or do you see this as a, a bridge to your next car? How do you feel about sort of keeping the car, letting it go? I'll be keeping this as long as I can. Yeah. Um, I've no immediate plans to change. Obviously, Porsche have brought out the... GTS 4 litres in the Cayman and the Boxster now. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, the cost to change, when I've sat and spec one up on the configurator, yeah. the cost to change is still way, way more than what I would personally feel is worth it. So if you could if you, if you you could get one, sort of what, what price would you be looking at for the new 718 naturally aspirated? 
the absolute spec yeah. that, that I've sat and played with uh -huh. is coming out at about 82,000. So if you see 82,000 pounds, let's say you traded this for 42,500 pounds, you're gonna pay 40,000 pound extra. Yeah. Would it be worth 40,000 pounds extra? Would you get 40,000 pounds worth of extra excitement and enjoyment? No, no. I've got 95% of that with this yeah. already, including actually my first choice of body color and roof color. Yeah. Well, David, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for bringing the car to me today. I've really enjoyed driving the car. Uh, it's a beautiful car. It kind of makes me want to start looking at GDSs myself, in fact. Um, as to whether I'd get one in this spec, would probably be pretty hard to find, I think. There were only about 13 of them on the market when I last looked, so quite a, quite a rarish car, but a, a car that I've really enjoyed driving this morning, so thank you very much for bringing it over. No problem, you're welcome. All right, thanks. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Other People's Porsches. If I make one, that is. I hope I'll make one. I might get somebody else. If you want to, if you want to have your car on the channel, send me an email, and we'll do a similar style video on your car. Um, thanks for watching. Obviously, don't forget you can like TBN Rainmaker on Instagram and on Facebook. If you haven't already, really appreciate it if you can subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.